we begin with a discussion on an issue making headlines. Epidemics and economic crises tend to affect everyone, but the International Labour Organization says that they have a much more devastating impact on society's most vulnerable who are living on the margins. So far, countries across the world have been largely unprepared for the COVID-19 pandemic, and many are now worried that it's already worsening social inequality. Today, we connect with Dr. Mark Shannon, Associate Professor of Politics at the University of Reading in the UK, and Manuela Perino, a journalist based in Brazil. Well, first of all, Dr. Shanahan, um, is it fair to say that a pandemic like COVID-19 has the heaviest impact on the lives of people facing rather difficult socio-economic circumstances? I mean, is there actually even a higher risk of them contracting the virus? Uh yeah, uh, almost certainly so. If you can socially distance, and that's an awful lot easier if you have your own house, if you have a garden, if you're uh, distant from your neighbours, if you have transport that you can get around without going into contact with other people, you have more chance of avoiding the virus uh, where that's possible. Uh, in lower socioeconomic groups, whether it's in the global south or even in developed countries, that's a lot less possible. Uh, poorer people tend to have poorer access to health um, systems. They are more likely to have underlying diseases anyway. They're even more likely to have such things as obesity and access to decent sanitation is harder to find. And if you're living with your family in a tiny flat in the middle of a city, it's much harder to socially distance. So all of these factors taken together mean that you are more likely to be at risk. You even look at places like Chicago, where 70% of the deaths so far have been among the poorer African-American community. So while everybody is at risk, this virus does hit disproportionately at the poor. So wherever you are, the better off you are, um, the more well, capable you are of um, avoiding large crowds and actually um, uh, defending yourself against this virus. But unfortunately, it's always people under the poverty line or living on the margins that are more exposed to this virus. And well, Manuela, Latin American countries, they tend to have large disparities in income as well as access to quality social services. And in your country in Brazil, the richest 1%, for instance, they hold nearly a third of the country's total income, but for the bottom 50%, it's only 14%. How conspicuous is this gap in daily life? And um, do you think it's going to widen over the course of the pandemic? Well, yes, um, and you see here you see disparity literally every day, in particularly in a city like Rio, uh, where poor communities live uh, literally next door to the rich ones uh, because of the natural architecture of the city. Uh, the favelas are, as they're calling in Portuguese, the communities, uh, are built on the hills that are in the heart of the city. So the poor have access to the rich neighborhood because they work for them in their houses, in their exclusive clubs and restaurants. But the rich never set foot in the communities because they're scared and because they have no interest uh, in knowing how the low income people live. And this pandemic will definitely widen uh, the distance even more. An easy example, um, rich have access to private and excellent hospitals, low income population have access to poorly equipped public hospitals, and we will see a big difference in the number of deaths between rich and, and poor. Uh, recently, the governor of Rio has launched the idea of isolating ill patients from poor communities in ships, and instead is building a brand new private hospital uh, for the rich. Another example are the schools. Uh, wealthy kids that goes to private school can continue to study through online classes. Kids that are going to public schools don't have this option. So really the COVID-19 pandemic is, in a way, um, it seems that it's worsening inequality in all aspects of life, not only just um, everyday living conditions or income, but education as well and access to quality healthcare. Well, Dr. Shannon, I'd like to hear your opinion on this as well. Could um, COVID-19 actually exacerbate in income inequality and living conditions for people? And um, also, how would widespread inequality affect government measures against COVID-19, like social distancing, for instance? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at probably four factors that are going to overcome this pandemic. Uh, social distancing, testing, um, 
then you're looking at the developing of, of the vaccine and before that ever happens it's access to good quality health care what we're seeing and i take somewhere like india as an example when modi introduced the lockdown there last week the people who were just left with nothing with no chance of accessing the testing or the good hospitals were the day laborers the poorest people and what that tended to do then was to get them to leave the cities and walk back to their rural villages, almost certainly carrying the virus to remote spots where it hadn't reached before. So whether there had been some kind of natural protection from much more dispersed communities in the countryside, that was being lost. Now that's not just happening in India, it's happening in Africa too. And 52 countries in Africa now have reported cases of the virus. And if you're in a shanty town around Lagos, you are much more likely to have lost your job, to have no income, to be getting poorer, and thus have far less ability to protect yourself in any way, shape or form from this virus. And that this is happening in country after country after country all around the world. If you're wealthy and can go to that nice country club in Rio, you're probably in a better position uh, to be able to avoid, or if you do actually catch the virus, have access to the healthcare that gives you a much better chance of surviving. Right, it's unfortunate that um, people who, who are low income and, and as they tend to be the hardest hit by this virus, they're losing their jobs, stability and life. And well, Manuela, most low income earners um, in Latin America, they work in the informal economy as mostly construction workers or domestic workers or even street vendors. What challenges do these people face during this crisis? Well, the first challenge for the low income earners here is that they live in communities where apartments are extremely small and access to clean water or water at all is, is very limited. So how do you ask people to observe social distancing when you have five people living in 20 square meter or to wash their hands if they don't have water? And the second challenge is to survive financially. Uh, Brazil is still the only country in South America that does not have a total lockdown. So you keep seeing street vendors, maids, and many workers uh, riding buses and still going to work, risking to get infected, but they have no choices. Uh, the government is trying to help informal workers, uh, workers that don't, don't have a stable job or, or a contract. Uh, Brazil Senate last week passed an assistance package to give to uh, the over 30 million informal workers a $115 uh, of monthly subsidy for three months. But will it be enough to avoid clashes and, and to save the poor? And these communities, they're, you know, at the same time, they're trying to protect themselves. The capital is sending mixed messages. So the Brazilian in vulnerable communities have been taking matters into their own hands and to shield themselves from the virus. Indigenous leaders have shut off uh, access to remote villages, in some cases barricading roads, uh, fearing that the coronavirus could wipe out entire communities that have limited or no access at all to medical care. And in favelas in Rio de Janeiro, drag gangs have imposed nightly curfew and community leaders have launched campaign to persuade people to limit their movement. Uh, but Wednesday, uh, the news that five people had died in Rocinha, one of the biggest communities in Rio, was the news that no one wanted to hear because it's the sign that the virus has spread widely between the poor and it will be very difficult now, uh, if not impossible, to control it. Right, so social distancing, it does seem to be the best description at, prescription at this point, but um, it's, well, it's quite unaffordable for some communities a lot of communities really across the world and well Dr Shanahan in the UK the US and um, also here in South Korea as well authorities are working to help these um, hardest hit f families and households with income support and measures like increasing unemployment benefits but what other uh, structural changes do you think will be helpful um, even beyond this pandemic to make sure that people have a stable level of income and social protection? Well, if we look back to the end of the Second World War, there was the Marshall Plan, where there was a, a huge economic stimulation pack, package put together by the United States, uh, both for East Asia and for Europe. 
while Trump is in office, I can't see this happening this, this time. He is so much America first. But you look at somewhere like Spain, which today announced that it was introducing universal basic income. So having uh, money going to all citizens, which both will protect them in a way, but also help restart the economy. And we might see this kind of universal basic income becoming much more prevalent in lots of countries, not just in Spain, but this could spread throughout. What we've got to do is have a move away from the economic growth model, the capitalist model that has just driven uh, governments for so long now, really since the 1940s. Uh, after the economic collapse in 2008, they bailed out the banks and, and major businesses. This has got to be different. This has got to be putting money into the hands of people at all levels of society. And maybe universal basic income is the best way to achieve that. So direct cash payments to um, people to support their livelihoods. Well, Manuela, what kind of measures or initiatives uh, do you want to see in order to uh, protect the livelihoods of everyday people and um, tackle inequality? Well, uh, here in Brazil, there are actually many initiatives to support low-income people. Uh, there are schools, companies, and also private people that have launched different campaigns to collect basic food and hygiene products to distribute among poor communities. What I haven't seen uh, here yet are big campaigns to support public hospitals, like I have seen in many European countries and in particularly in, uh, in Italy. Uh, here, public hospitals are lacking everything from basic products such as disinfectant, cleaning product, and mask to ventilation equipment. Uh, and last Friday, officials from the health ministry have declared shortage in even in trained health professionals. So, what I would like to see uh, it's well from the government. Uh, it will be more help to uh, to the communities, but I don't think that we're going to see that. Uh, so th here it's going to be in the hands of the, the welfare. And uh, now there is a, a small part of them that are, are doing something, but it will be if, you know, they will get together and and do big campaign, they could actually make a change in, in this country. So better income support, also, as you mentioned, uh, access to quality health care and also supplies that people need in daily life. Well, hopefully the COVID-19 pandemic will give us a chance to take the first step to um, actually tackling inequality, not just during this pandemic, but in the long run as well. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. But thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Mark Shanahan in Reading and Manuela Perino in Rio de Janeiro. Thank you. This is also where we end the programme today. Thank you for watching. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with more global insights on issues making headlines. Goodbye.